Years ago, over a decade ago, a man did a study. He was a professor on luck. And so he went out searching for people. He sent ads out to find 100 people who thought they were lucky and 100 people who thought they were unlucky. And so he gathered them, and over the course of a year in this study, he came to a conclusion that the people that were lucky weren't lucky at all. They were extroverts. And the people that were unlucky in life, couldn't get a break, were introverts. What does that mean? That means people that are big talkers and more social and smile and talk to people in the line at a grocery store, talk to people in line at a bank. Those people connect. They're like human LinkedIn's. And over the course of a lifetime, you'll talk yourself into a job. Oh, I have a cousin that works over there. Why don't I give you my phone number and you can call my cousin? You can be successful when you don't communicate, but it's harder. The jazz, communication, chemistry's great. Everybody's got a defined role. Who are the Clippers led by? Kawhi Leonard never talks. Second year in a row, terrible chemistry. This is what the Clippers are. I think they're going to beat the Jazz, but it'll never be easy with the Clippers. If you don't communicate, you have bad chemistry. Everybody fire Doc Rivers. Hey, he's the problem. They bring in Ty Lue. The chemistry's still bad. They're still awful late in the game. Is that the Clippers are always going to look like this. They lost the first two games at home to Dallas. They lost the first two games to Utah. This is the classic chemistry against talent, and history shows you talent beats chemistry. It usually does in the NBA. I mean, last night's classic. They're terrible early. They're great in the third quarter. And then they go five minutes in the fourth quarter without a single field goal. Paul George was good last night. Reggie Jackson was the best he's ever been. What happened to Kawhi Leonard? He was one for four in the fourth quarter. That's the Clippers. They're all rowing the boat. Just everybody's going in a different direction. And because their star doesn't talk, nobody communicates it. The Clippers have had 38 different combinations on the floor in two games. Last night, Rondo didn't play. Well, what happened to Rondo? Patrick Beverly did play. 21 minutes. Uh, now DeMarcus Cousins is suddenly playing. Well, where's Terrence Mann? I thought he was great against Dallas. Now he's not playing. This is the Clippers' second postseason together. They're still a riddle. They're still bad in clutch times. Their chemistry is at times awful, hit and miss. They still too often roll the ball out and think they're the best team and they're going to win. This is what they are. There's no such thing as lucky people and unlucky people. People who are extroverts and talk and communicate and are verbal get more breaks. It's easier in life. People who are crusty and rigid and don't talk and introverts can be successful, but it's always harder because you got to do all the work yourself because you don't communicate, you don't socialize, and you don't verbalize your feelings. And when they did that study, I think of the Clippers. It's always going to be ugly. It's always going to be difficult. Their star doesn't communicate. And listen, by the way, it's hard to win in Utah anyway. They hit a bunch of threes every night. They defend. I mean, with, with Utah, you get the same performance, win or lose. Everybody has a defined role. They communicate really well. Um, they play really good defense. They hit a bunch of threes. I know what I'm getting from Utah every night. I get good chemistry. I get good effort. I get good defense. I get a lot of three-pointers. I don't know what I get, Kawhi Leonard, Paul George, Quarter to quarter, half to half, game to game. Because they don't really communicate. But the NBA's got a history where talent beats great chemistry. I mean, you got when the when the Bulls had Michael Jordan, good God, Dennis Rodman in the middle of a playoff series disappeared to Vegas. You watched the last dance. Kobe and Shaq often couldn't stand each other. <laughs> talent wins in this league. But and I and I think it's a chemistry play against the talent play. And it's not. Now the question becomes is Donovan Mitchell. Now the most talented player in the series. Because Mike Conley's out. Donovan Mitchell is on fire. And if Donovan Mitchell keeps playing at this pace, then chemistry plus the best talent wins the series. That's the key. They have got to slow down Donovan Mitchell. Because if you have the chemistry and the talent, the most talented guy, you're going to win the series. We consider Kawhi to be the most talented guy, but Utah's got the chemistry. I still... Like the Clippers, Paul George had this to say, I still got the Clippers back. It's just going to be ugly, and it's going to take a while. All right, let's go to here. Uh, the Bucks edged the Nets, 
And that score is important. 86 points. That was it. Um, That was a bad win for Milwaukee. Brooklyn scored 11 points in the first quarter. KD was as off as he ever is. Chris Middleton, and this isn't going to happen again, was clearly the best player on the floor. And you won by three at home. And uh, you ever see that movie, The Incredibles, the animation? This series is The Inevitables. Um, Brooklyn's going to win this series. It's just the way it is. Styles make fights. The skill differential here is substantial. And you know what's interesting? You know how we talked about this week that, like, uh, Chris Paul's never gotten a break? Milwaukee's actually gotten, over the last several years, huge breaks. And they still can't break through. LeBron left the conference. Huge break. Kawhi left the conference. He gave them trouble. Huge break. The Celtics have imploded. Huge break. James Harden is out of this series. Huge break. It doesn't matter. Atlanta has a better shot to get through their series. Atlanta with a young 22-year-old star than Milwaukee. Milwaukee's gotten breaks. It's not like there's been these obstacles They're all leaving. Kawhi left the conference. LeBron left the conference. The Celtics were going to be this, and they imploded this year. And here's what you're left with. They're they're trying to make Giannis a three-point shooter, one for eight last night. Can we stop? The Bucs are a little like Wisconsin football. You respect them, how hard they play. They're always good. It's a great, great, fundamentally sound front office. But every time they match up with like an Alabama or a big dog, Ohio State, you kind of feel like they just, they don't, they don't quite have enough guys. And that's how I look at this series. I mean, think about this. Last night, in 2021 in the NBA, when you are Giannis and Middleton are on fire, the opposing star Durant doesn't play. Another doesn't play well. Another opposing star, Harden, doesn't play. You're at home. It's the biggest game of the year, and you're playing kind of a poor defensive team in Brooklyn. And you score 86 points? Like, it, this series, the last two years, the last three years, Milwaukee's actually gotten every break. LeBron's gone. Kawhi's gone. Celtics implode. Harden out of this series. 86 at home? Is Middleton going to give you that again? He was the best player on the floor. That's not that's not going to be occurring a lot in the series. So I, I I look at it and it's like I can respect Milwaukee, I can respect Wisconsin football, but I mean let's be honest about it. Wisconsin football. Urban Meyer leaves the conference. That's a huge break. It's your turn. Yeah, it's still Wisconsin. They're good. They go win nine games. It's not like I don't like them. I think they're great. I watch them all the time. But it's like. I, I, Milwaukee, you, you can't win 86-83 with all the things that worked in your favor last night. And by the way, the, the, the second round of the playoffs tells us a lot about teams in the first round. The way Milwaukee rolled Miami, and now Miami can't, Milwaukee can't compete against Brooklyn, tells you Miami needs to blow it up and start over again. Portland could not beat Denver without Jamal Murray Denver struggling to compete against Phoenix with a bunch of young players. Portland doesn't have that kind of talent. Like the, the, the second round is telling us a lot about teams in the first round. Like Portland, blow it up. Uh, Miami Heat, you were never that good. Blow it up. Well, the, the next round is going to tell us a lot about this round. And what it's telling us is this is, this is, I'm, I'm wrong. I picked him to win. One of the reasons I picked him to win, I thought, I thought health. Embiid always gets hurt. Celtics, Jalen Brown was hurt. Brooklyn's hurt. I thought, you know, Milwaukee's going to get through here because all their best players, Drew Holiday didn't get hurt a lot. Middleton doesn't get hurt. Giannis doesn't get hurt. They've gotten every break in this series. KD stinks last night. Harden hasn't played a game. Kyrie, by the way, didn't take a shot in the last four minutes. 86-83, you have met your ceiling. Last night was your ceiling. A narrow win when you get all the breaks. The inevitables. That's what this series is. Brooklyn's going to win it. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.